Welcome, Joan. My question is, what, what would, uh, what, is it? <laughs> what if we lost the big cats, okay? Um, my passion as a researcher is to develop a model of shared habitat for the big cats. This model would make it possible for humans and big cats to coexist within the same environment. If we live together, this would remedy the loss of habitat for many species. If we remedy the loss of habitat, the cats are now experiencing. The human-wildlife conflict is the result of humans and animals living together. A human population continues to increase. The necessity that we live together will become more pressing. Here I present two cases in which the animals and the humans have found ways to coexist together. Lori Marker of the Cheetah Conservation Fund. In 1990, Lori Marker so loved the cheetahs that she sold everything and moved from California to Namibia and Africa to save the cheetahs. There she established the Cheetah Conservation Fund. Visiting one farmer after another, Lori learned the cheetahs were declining because the farmers shot them on sight. They believed the cheetah were preying on their goats and sheep. They believed the cheetah, <clears throat> okay, it was a hardship for them they were, because they were poor. When they lost one of their animals, feeding their family became more challenging. The combination of swing gates to protect their animals at night and livestock guarding dogs who lived amongst the animals decreased the predation on their livestock by 73%. And these um, ways to protect their animals <coughs> were Lori Marker actually introduced them <coughs> there to the farmers in Namibia to help them. These solutions reduce cheetah deaths due to retaliation by the farmers. The second example is Braya Jaga Aga Gontaran, who's she is she's a person who lives in Mongolia. <coughs> And she is involved in the Snow Le Leopard Conservation Foundation. She helped to, to create the Sasambunga Nature Reserve in South Gobi Desert, which is critical habitat for the endangered snow leopard. Snow leopards are endangered due to poaching, habitat loss, and retaliatory killings by farmers. In 2016, she persuaded the Mongolian government to cancel 37 mining licenses within the reserve. And this is truly amazing. I mean, I can't imagine that happening here. As of the 18th of June, 2018, there were no active mines within the reserves. All the operations now are illegal. In 2019, she was awarded the Goldman Environmental Prize. In her acceptance speech, she pointed out mining had destroyed pasture, water resources, and habitat. It disrupts the life of people, and it has little regard for the future of the people or the animals. 
when she learned that the sacred mountain habitat was under threat from mining, her colleagues and others joined together to protect the land of the snow leopard. They worked together to stop the destruction driven by individuals and corporations willing to sacrifice our precious environment for short-term gain. Bayaha shows her appreciation to the community for their hard work, sacrifice, and support. She tells her colleagues, this is just the beginning. We will work with the local community, the government, to ensure protected areas, not just the paper victory. She tells them and tells them to stay involved. She tells them that we will, as citizens, we will have citizen patrols, hire state rangers, and initiate research and community development programs. She reminds us, we are not the only ones living on this planet. We must coexist with other spe species. Speak out to protect the world around you. Okay, now we can go into the slides. Uh, so the second slide is, oh, we'll be, okay, thank you. <clears throat> okay, myths of half human and half animals. Okay, can that be played? Yeah, can that be played? Oh no, forget it. It's it's, it's going to yeah. be a problem. Okay. It didn't it didn't do what it's supposed to. Okay. So okay, so you're going to skip that one. Okay. Okay. Secnet is now this is uh, myths of half human and half animal. Secnet is one of these um, figures that's half human and half animal. And she is a lioness, she has a lioness head, and she's an Egyptian goddess. And this, okay, you've got 10 minutes, nine minutes, okay. Okay, okay the next one is Bastet, or Bast, is an Egyptian lioness goddess. Bastet, in her late form, later form, has a cat rather than a lion head. Cats throughout the world are in danger. You want? Okay, I didn't. No, there's one more slide. I haven't said. Okay. okay. Myths of half human, half animal. Since early times, it was important for cats and humans to live together. Sekhmet symbolizes the integration of power of the lion into the human. The human has assimilated the power of the lion. Sekhmet is an Egyptian myth that has. The, high, uh, the, the head of a lioness and the body of a woman. These myths of half human, half animal occur throughout the world. Big cats throughout the world are endangered or threatened with extinction. Next one. And the next one. Um, cheetahs. In 1900, there were 100,000 cheetahs. In 2016, there are 7,150 cheetahs left. These species are vulnerable and they're the first category of being endangered. Uh, the next one is the leopard. In 1900 there was no estimate of how many leopards there were. In 2018 there are 22,000 left to 24,000. These also are a vulnerable uh, species and they're vulnerable to extinction. Tigers. In 1900, there were 100,000 tigers. In 2018, there are 33,000 tigers left. These animals are very endangered. They're mostly endangered because of the, they're used for aphrodisiacs and people pay a lot of money for that, for that, the, for aphrodisiac, so they pay. The rhinoceros alone, when I worked in Namibia with the uh, cheetahs, the, uh, they come in there with helicopters 
and machine guns when they want to come after a rhino. And uh, so they try to keep it down that, you know, that they, there's rhinoceroses in those areas. Okay, the snow leopards, there's 19, uh, in 1900 there were no estimates, now there are 4,000 to 7,000 snow leopards. And they are a vulnerable species and are endangered. These are the ones that the women in Mongolia have been helping. In fact, she's the, she's done the, there's nobody else who has done what she has done. So we should all like give her energy. It's amazing. Nobody else has accomplished what she has. With, and then she'll say, we don't, I do not do this alone. Okay, the lion in 1900 had 500,000, there were 500,000. Today, there are 600 left, and these, they are vulnerable to extinction. The jaguars are, they live in, they live in, there's a few in Arizona, and they live in Central America and South America. In 1850, there were 400, Jaguars, now there is 5,000, and they're not considered threatened. They're the only ones not considered threatened, they're big cats. Pumas, this is very interesting. In 1900, there is no estimates. In 2018, we do not know. They are least threatened. Okay, okay, I did it. We need, why we need to extend our habitats. Big cats are particularly vulnerable vulnerable to habitat loss and habitat fragmentation because they require territories to obtain amount, uh, large territories to obtain the amount of prey. The rate of extinction is a thousand times the background rate. And this, the background rate is five species, the normal rate of losing species is five species per year. Now it's five times 10,000, uh, times a thousand, so every year we lose 5,000 species a year. Big cats and other large predators require large home ranges, large areas of land which <coughs> define prey to fulfill their dietary requirements. The only way we can extend our habitat is to make it possible for humans and to animals to coexist. The ecological role of big cats play in their environment. Big cats prey on grass-eating herbivores such as deer, elk, and moose, and antelope. The big cats are not, if they are not present, these herbivores will overgraze the plants on which they depend for sustenance. This causes the habitat to decline, to lose the capability to regenerate itself. They're also, this also affects the entire ecosystem as plants are lost, and they might, and this may cause other animals to depend on these plants to die and become extinct. E.O. Wilson, author of Half Earth, points out that half the earth already is available to animals. However, laws have to be enacted on the land so that it is available to the animals for all times. What is working now? We have reserves which protect the lives of animals and allow them to live lives without predation, fear of predation. Also these animal sanctuaries which give animals a home for the rest of their life. Both the human society, the prevention of cruelty to the animals, and the humane society are there to provide shelter and are for helping animals in need of help. State and the federal governments have organizations with laws and regulations which protect animals. The United States Department of Agriculture and the California Department of Fish and Wildlife are two such organizations. And then, oh, let me see. Uh, okay. And then I have some. Are we up at time? One more? Okay. okay. The process. Okay. Let me see. Let me just. A shift in consciousness is necessary and compassion is what will help the cats. Uh, consciousness is not a state of mind, it is of the heart. Compassion is to be connected to other beings. It is to 
love without attachment, and with care for the other. Compassion is when I feel almost unbearable pain because I realize the big cats are suffering. According to the Dalai Lama, it is considered genuine compassion because my pain for these big cats is not based on my attachment for the big cats. Attachment is when you have expectations. Expectations. You love and you expect. You love and you want something back. Our normal consciousness can be changed if we develop compassion. We have we can practice genuine compassion by having compassion for all beings, regardless of the circumstances and love another and, and to love others conditionally. The myth of the half human, half animal is found in many cultures throughout the world. It is important that we reestablish the balance between humans and the animals. The title E.O. Wilson's book, Half Earth, alludes to the myth of half human, half animal that we must reestablish in order to rectify and do justice to the big cats. E.O. Wilson states that humans cannot evolve unless we evolve with animals. Our modern society has persecuted big cats for the last 140 years to the extent that they are now at the edge of extinction. Isn't it time we rescue them from extinction?